Hello, friends, and welcome to Coffee and Conversation. Rays of Hope, coming from the Gordon Avenue Baptist Church in Adel, Georgia. And there's just not a better place to find a ray of hope than in the light of God's holy and precious word. Let me invite you to pick up your copy of God's Word today. Turn with me over to the book of Ephesians. Today we'll be in Ephesians chapter 5. And I want us to look at verse 15 through verse 21 as our text verses of Scripture. Let's look at the Bible together. The Bible says here, See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. And be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing, making melody in your heart to the Lord." giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. And friend, I pray that our Lord would add his blessings to the reading of that wonderful word today. Today, friend, I want to bring to you uh, the first in a series of devotional thoughts that I've titled Defeating a Troubled Heart. Get that good fresh cup of coffee. Let's have a, a great time together as we enjoy our coffee and a word from God. Well, amen. What better way to start this day? Fresh coffee and a word from God. Well, friend, in this old life that we're living, we all face disappointment. In fact, we can't live without expectations. And many times we fall short of our expectations. And what this means is that we need to learn how to overcome disillusionment to, and uh, how to get by these most difficult days. God, listen, God has given us weapons to defeat discouragement. In Ephesians chapter 5, in these few verses of Scripture, Paul points out the reality that we rarely like to admit. Friends, we're living in evil days. The brokenness in this old world means that we must make the best use of our time. And Paul tells us this. For two reasons. First of all, the days are evil because they trick us into thinking we have more time and opportunities than we really do. The Bible says life is like a vapor. It's here for a moment and then it's gone away. And then secondly, the days that we live in introduces evil into our lives, so we have to be careful. Yes, we must be careful to make sure these expressions of evil won't hobble us. In these brief verses of Scripture, Paul tells the Ephesians what they need to do in order to walk wisely. Let's look at these uh, few uh, things that's so important. We'll look at the, the first thing that we want to see this morning. Number one, don't get drunk on wine, but be filled with the Spirit of Almighty God. You know, friend, ever since man has learned to ferment fruit or to create alcoholic beverages, we've been adorned with its ability to shield us from life's painful realities. But it only does that for just a moment. Paul doesn't tell us to avoid drunkenness. He instructs us uh, uh, to be filled with the Spirit of God. He doesn't t just tell us to avoid drunkenness but he tells us to be filled with the Spirit of God. Friend, you can substitute many things for wine in this verse. Uh, you can substitute money. You could substitute uh, any tangible item that you may possess. If it's controlling you instead of you controlling it, then it's running your life. 
So you can substitute many things for wine in this verse, and the instruction is the same. Avoid drunkenness. Avoid whatever it is that's trying to control your life. Don't ignore the difficulties in this life by burying yourself in wine, drugs, mindless internet suffering, uh, and the list could just go on and on. Friend, you may think that you're avoiding pain, but you're just postponing pain. Yes, drunkenness may get you so far out of your mind that you get the terrible evil off your mind that's trying to invade your soul. But just as soon as sobriety comes back, just as soon as you sober up, uh, friend, the pain is still there. There's only one thing that can remo remove the pain of hurt, the pain of the evil in this world. Notice what Paul tells us in the scripture. He says to be filled with the Spirit of God. Instead of, of uh, just going off on uh, drunken tangents, be filled with the Spirit of Almighty God. And when you're filled with the Spirit of God, friend, you'll be equipped to deal with life's difficulties instead of avoiding life's difficulties. So be filled with the Spirit of God. Well, friend, we'll stop there and uh, we'll continue tomorrow on this same subject, a good subject, defeating a troubled heart. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this beautiful series of devotional thoughts that teaches us what we need to do uh, to overcome uh, a troubled heart. And we've learned already this morning that we need to be filled with your spirit. So help us, oh God, uh, get, lose sight of those tangible items that try to control us and to allow you to move into our lives by your spirit. And when that happens, we'll see that things are better than we think. Help us to be filled, so filled that we spill over out into a lost and unconcerned world that others will be able to see Jesus. For we make our prayer in his mighty name, the name Jesus. Amen. And friend, I pray you'll do just that. Make a difference in your world. Be filled with the Spirit of God so full that you spill over out into the world and that others will be able to see Jesus. God bless you and you have a wonderful day.